to the podcast, everybody. It's the little things. If you forgot the name, um, <laughs> <laughs> if you clicked on it and you just didn't really know what you were clicking on, welcome. If you're somebody who listens to us every week, we love you. We love you all. Anyways, now that we got that out of the way, um, welcome and welcome back. Welcome back. We missed. We had a week off because, you know, life got crazy. Um, all of us had different schedules last week, so that was mm-hmm. funny. Um, what is going on with y'all? You guys said there's a tornado, Sharknado. Yeah, tornado. I woke up at four a.m. this morning to the sound of lightning and thunder. Oh, that was just as in Troy. I thought, ew. <laughs> ew. For those who aren't watching, she just flexed her muscles. <laughs> That was sick. I hated that. <laughs> Don't be mad. Be glad. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I know you guys miss that kind of humor, okay? <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> you can. Yeah, please do help it. <laughs> <laughs> guys, yeah. Um, well, yesterday was like 70 degrees in Ohio. Cute. What was it in Texas? It was 80 degrees today, but it's like <laughs> oh. 80. But it was so humid today. Yesterday was perfect. This whole weekend was perfect. Well, okay. We are we had snow on Saturday in Ohio. Like an inch of snow. Snow and then it was 70 degrees two days later. That's crazy. Yeah, we're living in the Bermuda. That's um, why there's a tornado happening. Extreme mm-hmm. hot, extreme cold. Yeah, it's probably something to do with like global warming or something. I'm not really sure. I don't really keep up with those kinds of things, so don't ask me. And don't mark my words. I'm not Bill Nye the Science Guy. All I know is that Saturday it was snowing, Monday it was sunny, today high winds. So very high winds. Mm-hmm. Everyone's gonna have the wind blown look. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna have the wind blown look. Has anybody been watching Love Is Blind? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Lord, I'm, I'm very sorry about that, but I am obsessed with it. I watched, watched it like this. First, yeah, I watched the first few seasons, and every season, I just the problem is that I can't enjoy it because I sit there and I'm like, these people need Jesus so bad. <laughs> like I know. seriously, okay, but I, some of them have Jesus. If you watch this past this season, I think is my favorite. Honestly, really, I haven't seen it yet. yet. All I've, I've seen I are the memes about the two. girl. With Shayna and Shane oh. and all the crazy, they, oh. they were hilarious. Crazy. <laughs> they really needed Jesus, but they did. <laughs> but this season is like, I, I'm just amazed. I'm amazed the entire time I'm watching it. What do you think about it? I definitely this season didn't have like it. Kind of when, what am I saying right now? I'm trying to think of who all's in it because I don't like any couple in it. Like it started off really slow, mm-hmm. and then like and then all the drama came whenever they started seeing each other. And yeah, you have to watch this season. I'm, I'm telling you, it's it's the honestly memes. the best one. I've seen the memes on Instagram about the chick that said she she's like, well, I get that I look like Megan Fox, and all the memes that people was are creeping her apart. Gel. Crazy. jail <laughs> jail and she jail. is a child of god and she's beautiful and she's a queen and i and we love that about her but i'm saying that's like somebody being like i have carrie underwood legs <laughs> you better be so dang yeah. for sure that you have carrie underwood legs if you're gonna make an announcement like that if you're gonna make a bold announcement that you and are on tv's crazy bro <laughs> like she's on tv yeah. and she said that and i've been seeing all of that and then i saw a clip of this one girl just dragging the guy she's with because he was with this other girl or whatever yes so i don't know all the tea but i saw that on instagram and i was Jeremy. like maybe i should watch it but the whole time i'm sitting here like man our world is broken i mean it broken is. because i was talking with my clients the other day, I was like dating shows in general, like as entertaining as they are to watch mm-hmm. the whole time I'm sitting here thinking like, y'all, this is not what love is guys. Uh, like the bachelor mm-hmm. as fun as it is just because of that. Think about it. That's not how dating works. And like, I know, but you- I love the bachelor too. <laughs> it's also- well, I know I like watching love is blind, but I just think 
thinking about the the brokenness of somebody yeah. who's like 25 years old so young and mm-hmm. they go on the show because they're like i've been dating for so long and i've had no luck i'm like you're 25 mm-hmm. give it some time mm-hmm. like seriously but it's mm-hmm. anyways not to be the pooper of the party but i i am gonna watch no it. you're not a pooper of the party it's definitely it's definitely terrible like it, <laughs> it is definitely has a terrible connotation behind it but like something about watching it i'm just like mesmerized so i know intrigued the entire time because i'm like how are the how is this real i was so invested in the first few seasons like i was like who's staying together and that one couple that was from the first season is still, they're together. still together and mm-hmm. they're so cute and i really liked I them know. they were not toxic the whole time they were just perfect uh-huh. they mm-hmm. didn't get a lot of screen time because of how perfect they were because they <laughs> because they were so not mm-hmm. dramatic and they, they didn't just, bring the drama they actually did just love each other mm-hmm. that was actually crazy and they were at a good age for that too. So they were like, okay. I was like, perfect. Y'all. Yeah. Not to not to add to it, add to the um problem. Cause obviously the watchers are the problem. We are the ones that made it go big. <laughs> <laughs> not to add to the problem, but it's such we a good season. Problem. It's so funny. It is really funny. <laughs> no, it's, it's like a, a comedy. The gal that's with Jeremy, I forget her name. Chelsea. She- oh wait, Laura. Laura, she was dragging him, but like, <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so, though. But it was like, so, it was so funny. Yeah, because he gaslit her and was like, "You have my location. You should be fine." And she was like, "I checked, and she the checked location. it. You lied." I'm about sorry, it. we're grown <laughs> adults. <laughs> yeah, and you still like. The comments, the comments on the be- post <laughs> were cracking me up because they were like, "Dude." When she's already breaking this up, she already knows what you did. And you had the right. audacity to look her in the eyes and be like, <laughs> literally. No. And she was like, I checked your location. You were not right. there. You were yeah. at her. Uh, that's crazy. Any what? boy. Here's the thing. Every female knows this about other females. If the girl's asking a question, they already know already the knows answer. Always. They already have the proof. They already have the receipts. They already <laughs> have everything that they need. You <laughs> prove that the lie that you're about to make up it's false it's done for it's like, kind of hilarious it's kind of every no. girl's girl knows that if you if you are a male and you do not know that start reading some books yeah start watching <laughs> some movies because or start telling the truth at that point yeah. that girls also know a good idea. that's also a girls good. literally know and the the weird instinct that we have we can't explain it either but we know they always <laughs> know girl yeah that's what i'm saying bro girl. yeah yeah <laughs> When you're like, something's definitely wrong. And they're like, no, nothing's wrong. And then two weeks later, you're getting literally your heart ripped out of you. And you're like, I knew it. Yeah. I knew the I should have trusted my there. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. Um, yeah. So Sorry. going off of that, okay, with like <laughs> <laughs> transitioning into the topic at hand, <laughs> going off of that. So today we are continuously, this is the last section of Second Timothy one seven, which is for the spirit of the Lord does not give us a spirit of timidity, but of love or of power, love, and self-discipline. So we touched on being the first timid, and then we touched on power and love, and now we're on self-discipline. Going off of the show, I mean, this is like a great transition, actually, but like going off of the show and also talking about the aspect of lying, like what does – um why do we think like self-discipline is actually important and why does it matter in any context? Like when you look at social media and you look at what we're watching, um, we don't see a lot of self-discipline. So why is it important? Like, why do y'all think it's important for us? Um, okay. I'll go. (laughs) Um, I think it's important because ultimately like, I feel like self-discipline, self-control, accountability, like all those things kind of go hand in hand and they all have a lot to do with like growing, growing in like maturity, growing in your, all your relationships, growing as a human, growing in so many different aspects of your life. If you're not self-disciplined, especially spiritually, because that's like what we try to hit on for the most part, uh, even though that we just went on a whole tangent about love is, which is not <laughs> spiritual. But since we try to talk mostly on like our faith and everything, um, I feel like in self-discipline is so important because ultimately that's like where you grow 
the most is whenever you stay sit stay self-disciplined stay the course stay on the straight and narrow and ignore like the ways of this world and overcome the ways of this world and all of that comes from self-discipline and that self-discipline comes from the holy spirit so um i can when we were um talking about self-discipline I thought about the whole entire book of he- the whole entire book of Hebrews because it goes so far into like your spiritual maturity and growing in wisdom and um growing in self-discipline and everything and I just feel like that book is like so good in ways of uh, um trying to understand how important it is to be self-disciplined as a Christian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think self-discipline definitely helps us grow because it helps us create those like long-term habits um especially in my life like an example would be like I couldn't get up and read the bible like a year ago and so like I made it my mission to do so and so like it sucked the first not suck but like it was hard for the first month to get up like an hour earlier before and then like read my Bible for a half hour or whatever. But once I started disciplining myself in the morning and, and repeating that, it became a long habit or a long-term habit that I'm still doing now. And it's much easier. Mm-hmm. So going back to what you said, like, so like that's definitely growth that you can see. Mm-hmm. I think another thing too, with self-discipline is it helps you become like, more aware of what you're doing Mm -hmm. in a way it helps you actually see your behaviors and what you do throughout the day and like it and you can build off of that and if you want to change you know binge watching a tv show for example you can set boundaries throughout that and like working off of what what habits you want to build in if that makes sense right yeah that reminded me of um I remember like three or four years ago when we were in Moorhead Al our my old roommate our old teammate she like was spending so much time on her phone and she said like at the at the start of the new year she said she's so about new year's resolution she makes a new year's resolution every (laughs) year um and her new year's resolution for uh one of the years was to have less um screen time on her phone so she set time limits on every app on her phone and that was like a boundary that she set for herself because she was like, I'm, I'm spending so much, too, way too much time on her phone. And ultimately it made her so much more self-disciplined and not unconsciously scrolling the way that all of us do. Mm-hmm. And the way that all of us are have as an out for 2024 is to spend less time on our phone and stuff. So anyways, that just reminded me of that. Yeah. What about you, India? Yeah. Thanks for asking, Gilly Pop. I think uh, everything y'all said is great. I think self-discipline is goes along with what sets us apart too i mean like we're called Mm -hmm. to be set apart as believers and you know when you're like with sanctification i believe self-discipline goes hand in hand with that so Mm -hmm. i'm i don't i a massive part of being a believer is self-discipline because if you really think about it um if we're walking with the lord but we're doing everything that the world is doing, which Romans says, do not conform to the ways of this world. So um, if we're doing everything that the world is doing, which is the complete opposite of self-discipline, um, then what, who are we? Like, are we truly walking with the Lord? And so, of course, the verse 2 Timothy 1.7 says, you know, the Lord gives us a spirit of self-discipline. So that comes from the Holy Spirit. So it, it's like, if you are a believer, you have the spirit inside of you. Self-discipline comes with that. So with that being said, I do think like, to me, it's huge. I think self-discipline actually deciding, okay, like I cannot continue in the same cycle that I am in, especially with like sin cycles or with phone or with social media or with getting up to actually read the scripture. Like as much as the Lord does give us a spirit of self-discipline, there's also a part of us that I think just expects everything to be done on his end for him to just make us get out of bed an hour earlier or make us do this. But like we have free will, like that's uh, like a huge, also a huge awesome factor about the God we serve. Our amazing God gives us free will. And so 
I think it's really cool that we have that opportunity, but also, are you going to take the step in order to grow closer to the Lord? Are you just expecting him to, to carry you that full way? So like, I think with any relationship, you have to put in effort. Like the Lord does give us a spirit of self-discipline. Like we want to work harder, but are you going to actually take those steps to do that? And so with that being said, what does that mean to you guys that we are given a spirit of self-discipline? Like, how does that make you guys feel? Or what is, what, is, what does that mean to you? Hmm. Hmm. Good question. I think a lot, like, self-discipline with the Holy Spirit comes through convictions in a way. Um, I've seen an evident in my life of... <laughs> Who's <laughs> licking me? His face is wet, and he's licking me. It's disgusting. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the um Holy Spirit. His job, one of his jobs, is to convict us in everything, and I've seen him work through the habits that I've had mm-hmm. in the past few years, and and seeing that growth today was definitely his um what he did um I lost my train of thought just now but let's see here conviction yeah yeah (laughs) I think what I'm, I'm trying to think what I wrote down but I think God gives us like kind of guardrails and like goals to have but he leaves it up to us in a way to see if like he to put an effort like you were saying Mm because I mean everybody has equal access of the foot of the cross it's just what you do with that access and what you do to develop like to develop that relationship so when you look at other people and be like wow they're close to God you can Mm -hmm. be that close to God as well like look at your habits look at what you're doing um are you pursuing it that as uh, as much as they are kind of thing Mm -hmm. and if not what are areas in your life where you can be disciplined I think yeah that's what I was wanting to say shoddy bae that's gas you ate that up oh thank you I got nervous yeah that was really good don't get nervous we're all just friends don't keep moving my way to be pastorials here (laughs) We're here for a good time and for a good fun time. Anyways, <laughs> um, that was the same thing back to <laughs> good time. Good good. Um, we're here for a good time and a good fun time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I definitely think that the Holy Spirit it like works through conviction, like um Peyton said. I also think a lot of it how you grow in self-discipline with the Holy Spirit is through practice. And when I was thinking about this as well, it kind of brought me to, I think we talked about it either last season or the beginning of this season. Um, In 1 Corinthians, when they're talking, when Paul's talking about practice and he's talking about running the race, because there's ultimately like one prize that we're all running the race for and to like not lose sight of that, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, ultimately, I think that we basically just have to stay the course and stay trusting god like as simple as that sounds i don't know i just think that obviously the first step you have to have is the holy spirit in your heart you have to accept the holy spirit in your heart in order to receive self-discipline from the holy spirit like we've talked about in first timothy or second timothy sorry is it second timothy second timothy yeah so So, i don't know i'm i'm losing my train of thought too andy you go ahead (laughs) okay um (laughs) whoa me too choo choo <laughs> wait wait i i know part of what i was wanting to say okay okay go is ahead. that when guard god sets the guardrails and in the goals but he also like invites us into that process like he isn't like the type of god that's like i'm gonna do everything for you because then we wouldn't grow and we wouldn't have like develop that discipline ourselves Right. And so I think throughout the discipline process, that's when we actually build up our perseverance and 
however that verse goes, like perseverance leads perseverance to, leads to endurance, which leads to yeah, yeah. in Romans, isn't it? Yeah. So like God yeah. gives us God gives us space and room to like build up our habits and everything because he wants us to be in that process with him. Right. I think it's tri- trials lead to Yeah. Count it all joy. It's in James. Is it James? Yeah, count it all joy as trials. It's talking about like trials lead to endurance and mm-hmm. Yeah. Endurance. I need to memorize that one. I don't know all the I know. The, I know exactly what you're talking about every single time. I can list I them off in my head, but yeah. I can't do them in order and I don't know. So I want to get that right. But um yeah. Going off of that too, like talking about the race and thinking about from an athlete's perspective, mm-hmm. I love for my benefit selfishly i love that paul talks about like the race and as athletes train like he mentions that in so many of his letters it's not just in corinthians but he mentions it in second timothy and he mentions it in some of his other letters as well which i love but he talks about training and running the race and and like in corinthians he talks about using like your body is your um like beating your body almost into submission. So like Mm -hmm. make your flesh a servant of Christ. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) like we want to serve, our mind wants to serve, our flesh wants to sin. And so it's really cool that Paul is like, no, make your body a vessel for Christ. And so, um, and as an, as like athletes, former athletes, we can also see how much it put, we put into our sport and how much discipline it takes, like never having fun in the summer other than like mm-hmm. tournaments, but you had to say no to everything, vacations, birthday parties, um, your own birthday, um, sometimes joy, but like the tournaments were awesome. And at the end of it, you're like, I'm really glad I did that. But there were so many things you had to like be self-disciplined about. You had to be self-disciplined about waking up early in the morning to go work out. And so those type of things, um, are just things that I think I can personally relate to from Paul's perspective, but also that you have to make your body a slave to Christ. Like you have, like your, your flesh is not, it's like wants to be separate, but make sure it's not like make it be a slave to Christ. Um, and I like, can't think of the verse it's in, but, um, I did think it was kind of gas (laughs) in, um, actually in first Corinthians, first Corinthians 10, 13 says no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And I think that's so sick when you think, Oh, I need to stop using the word sick when I'm referring to things, especially when it's talking about like the Bible. Um, (laughs) but it is, but it is really cool when you think about it, because think about how Jesus was on this earth and he was tempted and he faced a lot, if not all the same temptations that we face. So there is not a temptation on this earth that you face, that you struggle with, that somebody else hasn't also struggled with. Not only that, but not a single temptation or sin that wasn't conquered by Jesus dying on the cross and rising again. So like not only has somebody else also suffered or or been tempted with what you're tempted with but it's been conquered like why why is your body a slave to something that's already been defeated by the death and resurrection of jesus christ on the cross so i think that's so sick to think about like what do you mean i can't be self-disciplined about this like this is not something new this is not something that nobody's faced before like almost be like get a grip come on like what can I do? you know what i mean and so it's yeah. kind of cool to think that I, I don't know, thinking about it from my perspective, thinking like no sin has just not been defeated. Like it's mm-hmm. all been defeated. The victory is ours, my friend. We're just fighting these little battles. Right. Like, let's yeah. just win the battles and the victory is already won. The victory is victory is ours with Christ. So, yeah, that reminded me of that book that we read by JP it, in one of his chapters, he one sentence he was like choose the suffering now like I think that's what started me like getting up earlier mm-hmm. to to read my bible like it mm-hmm. I love I love sleeping until 10 but now I wake up at 7 and like at the first month it was hard and I hated it but like 
what he said made me like actually be like, yeah, I'll, I'm, I will choose suffering now because I mean, at the end of it, it's going to create this new habit that will lead to more peace and everything. Right. But with what you were saying about how Jesus did conquer every sin, there's not one like sin that is just new out there. Like just to think about how Jesus was the epitome of self-discipline. Like he had every power at the touch of his hand by the like by one breath or by one look, he could have like ended it all. He could have like stepped off the cross, but like he was so disciplined in what he was doing in into the will of God that he that he didn't. Mm-hmm. And that just is just mind blowing. And that same spirit lives inside of us too. So like, there's no, not, not to say there's no excuse, but like you have more power than what you, but then what you're thinking right now. Mm-hmm. You also have more self-discipline than what you're thinking right now. Yeah. Because all yeah. like what you're saying, Peyton, like building those habits, what, isn't it like after like 30 days of doing something, you like actually the habit becomes part of your routine or something yeah I know there's a set amount of days but I'm not really sure the exact amount it could be more it could be less I'm not sure but it takes like a certain amount of days to basically film film form (laughs) what's my speech impediment tonight (laughs) um to form a habit and so I think that um creating that habit is creating those like new habits and those like like fruits of the spirit type habits are what help to gain your self-discipline almost. Yeah. So that so, is good stuff, Peyton. Yeah. Y'all, this is this is sick. Um <laughs> sick. But one yeah. thing, like before we have to close out in a ish a little bit of time. Um, what do you feel like is a virtue or like a self-discipline that was something that you didn't have before actively like walking with the Lord, but now you're actively seeing it in your life? Cause I think that's like one of the coolest things to look back on is we constantly are like, there's things that we can improve. There's things that we can improve. But it's also really cool to see how the Lord, like the spirit of self-discipline that the Lord gives us is actually changing our lives. So what's something that you feel like you've seen become better or uh, that the Lord has just given you since you started walking with the Lord? Um, For me, actually, when you sent this, I was like, thinking about the different the different birth ver- oh my gosh I'm having a stuttering I'm having <laughs> hello lord please please help me with my speech right now thank you amen in Jesus name um <laughs> when you sent this and I was thinking about the virtues I was like you know my first instinct is evangelism would have been like would have been evangelism if I was thinking what is something that I that I could do better and now that you've asked it in that way I'm like No, I have actually seen myself grow so much in like bringing up Jesus in conversation that it's something that I kind of like don't even think about anymore because it just like happens out of nowhere. Like literally the other day in class, this is going to be a short example. The other day in class, obviously in like this graduate program, we are just literally being crammed with knowledge from semester one to now semester five. We are just putting so much information in our brain that it's hard to know like how I've remembered things and anyways we were talking about the end ranges of flexion and extension of the shoulder um and which anybody that knows whatever if you don't know it sorry about it look it up (laughs) anyway so the end range for she was talking about the end range of shoulder flexion is 180 everybody can lift their arm up by their shoulder and then the end range for she was and she said she was like okay what's the end range for shoulder flexion I was like 180 and she was like what about extension I was like 60 to 70 and I was like like one of the only people that said anything and I like looked around and I was like what the heck and my (laughs) table mate looked next to me and she was like good job girl I was like I don't know where that came from everybody signed like everybody just thinks it's funny and I was like where the heck did that come from and I was like you know what that actually came from the Lord that knowledge right there came straight from the Lord he said here is your recall that you've been praying about and (laughs) um because before every exam I'm like Lord I just pray that you give me the help of recall of information for these exams anyways 
Um, but just like cer- small things, even like that, like I would be so timid to say that in front of like, cl- I know that my classmates, not a lot of them are Christians, not a lot, not a lot of them are believers, but, and I was so scared going in, like having those conversations, bringing up God, just fear of judgment, really. And like, to think in a year and a half, like I will happily bring up God in any day of the week in in class and just be like, Lord willing or whatever, just small things here and there, but that I definitely would have been timid about before. But those are small examples. I'll talk about them in, in bigger forms too, but I don't know, just stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. What about you, TV? I think mine would be praying before like reacting. Like a year or two ago, I wouldn't even think about praying. I had like closed my praying life to like two times a day in the morning and at night and then now I'm just like I literally just have full-on conversations with the Lord out loud and like not even think twice about it like I just went on a like a prayer walk with out my phone and I just was like walking around just like mumbling to myself and everyone probably thought that I had a problem and I don't care exactly and I probably do (laughs) but well that's okay (laughs) I'm just kidding. But yeah, I've definitely seen a growth in my prayer life. Honestly, though, because it started with like more discipline, like instead of reacting in that moment, I literally had to force myself out of the room into my room and be like, okay, I want to take a minute to myself and then I'm going to go back out there. Um, But yeah, it's like little stuff like that, that have had a huge impact yeah that's awesome I was definitely gonna I was definitely thanks I was definitely gonna go uh probably with evangelism as well I was it's not that I was ever like I guess timid about my faith but I was timid about making people uncomfortable and I didn't want to be that person that was like oh like I don't want to push my faith on you but then I realized like thinking about what we're called to do is we're called to love and the greatest form of love is sharing the greatest salvation and the greatest story of all time which is the gospel and so once I realized that that it was like I'm actually holding love and forgiveness and salvation back by not sharing the gospel Mm -hmm. that changed my whole perspective I was like do I truly love somebody if I'm not willing to maybe make the situation awkward or uncomfortable in order to tell them the truth and show them what true love looks like. Um, and so, yeah, that perspective, I I think the Lord finally hit me one day and was like, I don't think you're truly loving people. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? What do you you mean by that? Uh, basically, (laughs) um, yeah, like I think evangelism in, in all different kinds of contexts, but I think just sharing the gospel like how many times can you actively say you have spoken through the gospel Mm -hmm. that is so hard and I wanted to make it more I was like I should not have to be like when was the last time I shared the gospel like Mm -hmm. I'm living out the gospel every day so let's like if I'm living it out every day why aren't I talking about it every day if it's important to me I'm gonna talk about it in my conversations anyways on that note I love you guys and um, this was so fun. And I think a huge part of self-discipline for myself, and I can't speak for y'all, but I know I can speak for myself, is like having this group that keeps me accountable with mm-hmm. those things. And so I appreciate right. you guys for that. And I love you dearly. For sure. We love you dearly. And you do the same. You both do the same for me. Mm, my pookie wookies. <laughs> love and hair grease. Yeah. So everybody have just, we love you guys. Go share the gospel with somebody. <laughs> Make somebody smile today, tomorrow. And the bees are officially out. Bye. Bye. Bye.